Okay, so you've built this whole thing in your garage, right? Yes. And does it move yet? Yes, it does. Can we try it? Let's do it. So during quarantine, some people sit and scroll on their phones, some people bake bread, but this guy built an entire electric car in his garage. Let's get started. So in the simplest of terms, how in the world does all of this work? So the simplest of terms, we've got a Tesla motor, electric motor run by batteries. Let me show you. So back here, we've got the uh, Tesla motor. That's kind of the uh, powertrain of everything. A lot of horsepower. This is the high voltage cables. That's where we get our power, power from the battery packs. All right, so we have a Tesla motor, but are we using Tesla battery modules? No, no we are not. <laughs> so how does that work? So uh, Tesla just needs kind of around a 400 volt uh, battery power. So I'm actually using LG Chem batteries, uh, 12 battery modules, essentially six in each pack. I've got two packs, that gives me roughly 400 volts. What did you have to do to make the Tesla motor work? Good question. So the Tesla motor, we need a controller. And so there's only a few companies out there that make a controller for the Tesla motor. This is the controller here. And uh, basically it sends canned signals to the motor that kind of tell it how to run. So I've been watching a lot of your videos and I think I can point out most of the major components. So should we see how far I get before? Let's <laughs> okay, let's see what's up. So inside of this car, we have the front battery pack here, which you said was LG Kim batteries, right? And so these batteries, uh, these orange cables are the high voltage lines and they are running back to the rear battery pack, which we'll get to in a second. This here is the front radiator, which has liquid inside that cools down the batteries. So far, so good. Okay, and then these high voltage lines are gonna come across through the center of the vehicle. You can see the orange tubing right there. And those high voltage lines come all the way back here to the second battery pack, which we have a nice little on off switch there. And they also provide power to the rear motor, which I think sums up all the big parts. So tell me about the frame though, because obviously this frame wasn't designed for the Tesla motor, right? That is correct. So this was designed for a Honda Accord drivetrain. So I had to do a few modifications. This goes a little faster than a Honda Accord, right? Yes, quite a bit faster. And how fast have you taken it so far? Probably not above 60. <laughs> Whatever you can do in a parking lot. Okay. All right, let's talk about the low voltage system for a second because yeah. I want to know how that works. So low voltage, uh, this is kind of the, my center node of everything. Um, I've done this somewhat old school, so everything's kind of based on relays. This is all the things to control headlights, turn signals, on-off switch, hazards. And so where is the 12 volt battery at? So that's on the other side here. So we have the 12 volt battery. So power comes into the car from the wall. Where's the plug at? So this is my uh, vehicle kind of charge port. <laughs> This is still a work in progress. Duct tape is just part of the masterpiece. Power comes from the wall to the charge port. Right here we've got, this is our onboard charger. So this converts it from uh, 220 volts to roughly 400 volts that, that can charge the battery. Other than that, you got your DC to DC converter. That's about the only other kind of system. And the reason we need a high voltage and low voltage system is because we're not gonna have our headlights and the horn run off of 400 volts. That would be overkill. So we have two systems, one to run the lower power stuff and then one to run the motor and where we need, you know, all of the big power. Speaking of big power, these wheels are insane. Check this out. So are these from a Honda Accord as well? No. <laughs> are they part of the Tesla system? No, so the, the rotors, the suspension, that's all part of the Tesla system. The wheels are not. The wheels are just uh, what fit the car. So they're 19 inch rims, 325, 30, 19. So this is the rear battery pack here, front battery pack over here, and we have one battery cell, or I guess one battery module, right here, and we're gonna weigh it and see how many, how many of these are in the car. We have 12 in the car. And this weighs 40 pounds, oh my gosh. So 12 times 40, 480 pounds worth of batteries. Did you know that? Yeah, it, it all came on one pallet. It was very heavy. 
So even though this whole contraption is much lighter than a Tesla, the batteries still make up the bulk of the weight because the frame doesn't weigh that much, right? No. Okay, so you've built this whole thing in your garage, right? Yes. And does it move yet? Yes, it does. Can we try it? Let's do it. <laughs> okay, sweet. I trust it, duct tape and everything. Let's go. Start. So basically that kicks on their 12 volt system which turns on the controller. Controller turns on the contactors for the high voltage. And the engine is revving right now, right? It's We're good to go. The only sound you can hear is essentially the coolant pump. This thing is sweet. All right, let's go. <laughs> this is so small. It's almost like getting in Dan's road suit. All right, so we are missing a couple things. Like a windshield. You have seat belts. I swear I put on a seat belt before. All right, I'm ready. stick to the ground long enough to actually get full speed. Yes, that is true. So right now we are at uh, about two thirds power. So we're at about 340 uh, kilowatts. So it can go up to 620, 475, so 620 horsepower. All right, so even though it's cold, how, how what is it? Like 32 degrees right now? It's like yeah. freezing. Even though it's cold, we're gonna try to see how fast we can accelerate and see what the zero to 60 time is. It's much easier than getting in it. So like we mentioned earlier, there are two battery packs and they are supplying enough volts to this motor. It is overdoing it on the power side of things. We are just losing traction with how powerful this is. You ready? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's insane. That's incredible. Every time, huh? Well, if you want it to, yeah. <laughs> when you use a Tesla motor, what do you get? So again, it's kind of the controller. The, the motor is a motor, very powerful motor. The controller is kind of what allows you to apply that power. So depending on what controller you have, what settings you have, that kind of allows you to do kind of whatever you want. That's incredible. So basically in here, we have the Tesla motor, but we have none of the Tesla safety precautions, which makes it a whole lot more fun. How would traction control work if you had, if you wanted it, I guess? We would need wheel speed sensors in the front to kind of make sure that uh, it knows when the back wheels are spinning faster in the front. So right now when he peels out, the tires are slipping, but the computer has no idea because there's no sensors where the tires are at, which for some people would be an inconvenience. I kind of like it though. I'll tell you the only thing that's kind of glitchy is the gear selector. Oh, you have to take off the steering wheel well, to get out? Trust me. <laughs> it's easier. Is that going to be fixed later on or is that just how it is forever? Uh, with this car, that's how it is forever. <laughs> so can you imagine with the steering wheel on? Right. So now if I take my foot off oh, the brake. And put on the gas. Rolling backwards a little. Ooh, wow. This is so smooth. Yeah. It's like, cause like in a normal car, you have everything protected and you have, yes, this is very This wrong. is like a very skeleton, expensive. no safety sensors. I mean, I have the steering wheel falls off. <laughs> this is sick. This is just like a roadster. 
now that we're both sufficiently frozen, what is the hardest part of building your own DIY Tesla? I would say it's perseverance. I think you gotta, you gotta really love the build. That's, that's I think the hardest part. Because you started with just like a bare metal frame, right? Yeah. There's so many components. Because like you have to think about it. There's like the steering, there's the braking, there's the headlights, taillights. There's so many different parts to this thing. Yeah. Are you a normal guy who just decided to do this? Or are you an expert in <laughs> vehicles? Pretty normal guy. Uh, to me, like I said, I just it, it's kind of always a passion of mine to build a car. And so uh, just, you know, finally got the guts to do it. And uh, I, I've loved it. So again, it's, it's all part of the process. You know, if you don't like the build, you're not gonna like uh, building. And so you wanted to build a car, but you didn't want to start with something old school, like a Mustang or something. You wanted to start yeah. with the hardest <laughs> components, electrical components to work with. That's right. So I know you're not done with this project yet, but on your next project, what would you change? I'd start from scratch. Uh, like frame and everything? I would, I think it's been one of my biggest challenges is trying to squeeze things into spaces they weren't designed for. So we are back in the garage again, and I think one of the next steps is this. So what steps do you have left to finish off the body of your electric vehicle? Yeah, so these are all the panels that I have left to put on. Um, a lot of fiberglass work, a lot of just fitting the panels so it gets, gets it a good look. All right, let me know down in the comments. I'm sure he already knows what color he's gonna end up painting it, but let me know down in the comments what color you think you should paint it. I'm kind of thinking we should go glow in the dark, but that's just me. Anyway, if you want to see all of his videos about building this whole contraption, they're pretty impressive. I'll leave a link to his channel over here. And to finish us off, what is one word of advice you would give, or one sentence of advice you would give to someone who's going to attempt a project like this themselves? Perseverance. Um, stay with it. It's worth it. It's the long haul. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you around. <laughs>